Hey everyone, and welcome back. This is The Happy Cat here. It's been a little while, but this is our first video of 2017, along with, and I never ever thought I would say this, my 100,000 subscriber thank you video. Uh, when I started this channel, I thought maybe one day I might get to this milestone in like five or six years, like that would be a fun checkpoint that might happen far off in the future if enough people kind of accidentally found my videos with a very slow burn. But it's been less than two years of kind of irregular uploads and I'm really surprised but mostly grateful. Uh, thank you guys for supporting the show uh, and especially to those of you who contribute to community projects, discussions, uh, just everyone. And I also thought I'd take this video to first thank you all and then kick off 2017 with kind of a year in review of this channel and where it's going. And first and foremost, I want you guys to meet my cat that I just adopted, Gwendolyn. She's sitting behind me sleeping very sweetly. Uh, but she is the new flesh and blood champion of this channel. She is the real life happy cat. And a quick note is that my phone camera has been desyncing audio. I have a new setup thanks to you guys on Patreon for real. Uh, I was able to get some new equipment and I had about two hours of recordings for the happy cast, a podcast I was planning. And every 10 minutes, the audio would kind of desync for a bit and it just got annoying and a nightmare to edit. So the happy cast is postponed. That footage is scrapped. I'll make something better later. Uh, but I just want to talk to you guys for a bit behind the mic. And this is also my excuse to not clean my room because if the camera was rolling some of you might be a bit disappointed in me and and the illusion of YouTube my youtuber identity would be broken so we can't have that <laughs> but I just want to talk to you guys for a bit about Gwendolyn because I promised a cat stream but I figured instead of a stream why not just have everyone meet her and then just just about about stuff I know you guys who are watching this are likely subscribed to me. You probably, this isn't your first video of mine you're watching, if you're watching this, if you get what I'm saying. Anyway, here's, here's Gwendolyn. We adopted her on December 14, 2016, and her birthday was the following Tuesday the 20th, according to her papers. So she is six years old, and it's, it's kind of crazy because the adoption fees for cats over, I think, five years old were $20. Kittens are like $100 because everyone wants a cute little kitten. But for our older cats, it was $20. And they really didn't even ask too many questions. Uh, like, I, I, I went out for dinner last night and my meal was more expensive than Gwendolyn. <laughs> oh, I don't want her to hear that. It's so sad. Like, I know, I know these animals need homes, but maybe we should... We should raise the barrier to acquiring cats a, a, a little bit. I don't know. I just I just worry there's like either not necessarily even bad owners, just maybe people who don't know certain things about how to take care of cats or things that scare cats. I don't know. It, it just it just made me worried. But in any case, she's very she's very happy and healthy and she naps next to my desk while I work. Like right now, she's just sitting behind me on my bed. She sleeps right next to me each and every night. And she really loves, it's so cute. She really loves this stuffed turtle. And so I've decided if she were ever to become a Pokemon, she would like, I don't know if there's artists out there, I would love to see you guys sketch this out. I, I think she would fuse with her cute little stuffed turtle and its name would be Gwirtle. And that's kind of the nickname I've been calling her. Like, just Gordle, Gordle, come here. <laughs> and if she if she had a third evolution, I think I'm going between several names. It could be Gordichu, but that's a little campy. I, th I think maybe like Gordellini. I like Gordellini. I wonder what that would look like. I don't know. That reminds me of spaghetti or like pasta a little bit. So I don't know. Maybe, th maybe that would be a little bit weird. And she's... She's a little bit weird too. I mean, I guess every cat is, but her her particular shtick is that every day, like literally every day in the evening, she will try to very sincerely 
uh, chase her tail and eat it. Like she will bite it and not like, and not be like taken aback. Like, oh no, that hurts. That's attached to me. But just very much be like, this is an evil thing. This is some evil furry animal attached to my butt that I, that I have to live with. Like, that's what I think she's thinking in her head. And then I don't know if she gets into arguments with it and wants to like chase it. I don't know. It's like something out of parasite. <laughs> Just this living thing attached to you. Anyway, she's really cute though, so she can do whatever she wants. I guess that's how it works when you're when you're a cat. But she, I guess she had spent the majority of her life with some previous owner until for some unknown reason, they had to give her to the Seattle Humane Society. And I think they did take good care of her. I mean, there's a ton of different reasons why someone would have to give up a cat, not judging immediately, because she's really healthy, has zero health problems, and she really likes to be around people and really likes attention, but not like crazy to the point where she was like, mentally or emotionally disturbed she she just she's she's good so i'm pretty sure her previous owners were good but she was adopted by someone before me in october i think it's kind of shaky but i kid you not she was brought back to the shelter after someone just a random person found her abandoned like far out of the neighborhood she was adopted into. So she came back, her only health thing was that she was really dehydrated because she was just wandering outside. And she is not an outdoor cat at all. And I just can't believe, like, I don't know. I understand if a cat gets out by accident, but she's, she's microchipped. So they're able to identify her. And I'm assuming contact the people who adopted her because they have that on file. But either... They like never came to pick her up or never called back. They said they didn't know. They just found her abandoned and then there was no word. Which, once again, I try not to judge people's circumstances. Maybe I'm missing something here. But if I couldn't take care of an animal, I would have the decency to like drive it back and make sure it's okay. And if it was missing and got out, I would call like... I don't know if you'd call the police, but I'd at least call the shelter to let them know. Or I I don't know. I'd be really freaked out if an animal of mine got out and I had no clue where it was. But then, so, so that's already sad. It makes me so sad to hear that that happened to her. And then she was bounced back into the shelter and then to another one in Issaquah for a few weeks. And then to a place that was right in my neighborhood and it was one of the it's one of those pet supply stores that hosts like a couple cats from shelters for a month but they mainly sell like food or fish or like kitty litter so she's sitting in there in early December and I'm probably passing by that building like all the time while going about my daily business our, our paths I don't know like in those Korean dramas or something where your paths just barely cross or like I don't know melodramatic anime or something like that but okay so that's where she's at she's sitting in the pet store in my neighborhood and meanwhile at this point in December I'm just going through like a huge inflection point in my life after a year of like a lot of success but a lot of change and this kind of is all like everything's kind of coming to a point which is why I wanted to make this video because I think even this milestone with the channel uh it's kind of like a new a new beginning but anyway just to give just to give background on what I mean uh some of you know that I graduated college last May my bachelor's from Illinois in Champaign and then I moved to Seattle where I am now for my first big kid full-time developer job uh last summer and I've lived in Illinois my entire life. I grew up in the Chicago suburbs. I went to school in the city for a bit and then in Champaign, Urbana, all the way out in the cornfields. So I got the true Midwestern experience. And now I'm all the way on the West Coast in an admittedly kind of awesome place. But my mom also moved to Michigan at the exact same time, meaning I suddenly had like no home base anywhere in Illinois and the, I, I don't know it's always been like I've had that as like a rock in a center even though I complain about Chicago and the weather so much it's just weird to think that even though I've only been gone for a few months the next time I'm in town I'll be visiting all my familiar places as 
kind of a tourist. I don't know. Even if I'm staying with friends, I still very much feel like I am traveling. I'm not in my comfort zone. You know what I mean? So, okay. So I've transitioned from being a student into the working world, from the Midwest to the Pacific Northwest. And then soon after I move, my childhood cat of 16 years, almost 17 years, Milo passes away. And I remember getting a call about it the same day I published the brain fuck video of all videos. And it was kind of, it was kind of like losing, this is going to sound kind of dramatic, but it was like losing the last living piece of my childhood because he was my first pet since I was about six years old. And even though he was really weird and sometimes really grumpy, we were just best friends ever since elementary school all the way through high school. All of my friends, even people I wasn't that close with, knew about Milo. Like, we had so many inside jokes that he was, like, this Russian spy. And I would, like, write little comics about him. Like, I just really, really loved him. And I've always had, like, an animal in my life. I also had a dog, Strider who a couple years ago passed away too, and he was my dog since I was in the fourth grade. So he was about like 10, he was about 10 years old. And it was just, I I love like my animal family members so much. Just like, you know, I bet so many of you do too who have pets. Uh, I know maybe there are some of you who are like, I don't get it. But for those of you who do, you know what I mean. And so I, w- I was really sad, and my boyfriend Rave and I, we were thinking about getting a cat or a dog. We couldn't really decide, because we both really wanted a big, fluffy dog. We're not so into small dogs. We wanted a big guy, like a golden retriever. Uh, and we were looking through listings and shelters each month, and we went to meet a few dogs. But we didn't meet one that was really right for our situation or the dog situation. And so we figured... Let's just wait till we live somewhere with a yard before considering a dog because we just want to make sure it has space and that there isn't any issue with like weird apartment landlords. Uh, And we also weren't sure though if getting a cat would mean it would be hard to adopt a dog down the road because a lot of adoptable dogs are not cat friendly. Like they would just go after it, chase it, hurt it. So we were just very unsure of what animal to get, but I knew I just wanted one so bad. But then everything changed when the Gordles attacked. Uh, one one random day uh, in December, Dece- December 19th, because we got her the following day, Rave walked by this pet store that's right in our neighborhood on a whim and we hadn't been there for months like sometimes we'd go in and we'd like pet the cats and play with the cats but we hadn't been there in months hadn't really talked about it or thought about it and he saw little Gwendolyn sitting in a corner being very polite and quiet and he came home and he just said I found the perfect cat and then we just went into like battle plan mode I didn't even meet her yet but I was just like okay, how are we going to get this cat? (laughs) Let's go right now. Uh, And there were just a couple of things that besides like all of this I'm leading up to, it just felt like emotionally it was the most perfect point in my life to get a cat. But then it was the fact that she kind of looks like, okay, this is going to sound really cheesy. I really wanted Dark Souls name for whatever pet we got next. And so her name is Gwendolyn. And I know that like Gwendolyn, that's why at first I like, I know I published that her name was Gwyn and I was spelling it Gwendolyn, but then it looked really weird and pretentious to spell Gwendolyn with Y's and like make everyone call her Gwendolyn. So she's really like Gwendolyn. Sorry, the name Gwyn didn't really stick. But- Okay, as I'm editing this, just to clarify, I know that Gwendolyn is a Dark Souls character, but I didn't, when I was trying to think of a new name, I didn't have, you know, tentacle person with complicated past and parental issues. That wasn't really the image of what I wanted to project on this cute cat I just adopted. Like, I also thought Smo was a really fun name for a cat, like a little Smo ball, so cute, but... You know, I didn't want to associate dishonorable cannibal with with my with my pet. So that's all. <laughs> Editing me signing off.
but that's okay. But the reason, okay, on the day of, it sounded like a great idea to name her Gwen because she kind of looks like a little Franken kitty where she looks like my cat Milo. He was a Bengal cat where, I don't know, like most of her coat looks like him, but then it looks like an orange cat was just like attached to one of her legs or something where she has a lot of like orange rippling throughout and it almost reminded me this is gonna sound so cheesy and like okay and you're trying to find symbols in the world when it's all just like very pleasant coincidence and that's fine but <laughs> I thought it was like you know Gwyn Lord of Cinder and it was like my cat in a sense symbolically rising from the ashes and like that I could you know get over like my other cat by adopting this other one who needs a home. I don't know. My th I guess I didn't really think that one through very clear clearly. I guess that's why the name Gwyn didn't like stick. But hopefully you guys get what I mean. She looks like Milo reincarnated, but she's like six years old. So even if reincarnation is real, I don't think she, I don't think you can reincarnate to something that's already been alive for several years. Anyway, anyway, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting rambly. But, okay, but, like, back, back to, like, why Milo, the cat, was kind of important. I get sad even just, like, saying his name. But he was, he was one of the last threads in my life. Like, since my mom moved out of Chicago, there was no home base left in Chicago. I'm no longer a student. Like, all these aspects of my identity, it's not that they were going away, but they were definitely transitioning and Milo was like one of the last threads that very tightly bound me to everything of what I'd call part part one of my life. Like if you look at if you look at your life as a book, if I look at my life as a book, I can lay out chapters marking maybe different identities or challenges or eras I dealt with growing up, like, okay, this was kind of my childhood, this was this shitty part of middle school, this was this other different shitty part of middle school, and so on and so forth. Like, I can lay out these different very kind of, uh, like, like these segments that feel like there was kind of a beginning and end to a particular uh, issue or, yeah, thing I was going through. Uh, but this Milo felt like a sort of clean break like when he passed away it felt like I was very definitively moving from like part one which was the first 22 years of my life as like throughout being in school and growing up and now we're on to a brand new part two like all of my my studying emotional struggles uh growing up all of that prepared me to go out into the real world, which is where I am now, and I'm able to support myself, and I'm able to really start making creative stuff for myself and for you guys, and not just to like, I don't know, put on a resume or impress everyone. Like I'm, I'm very happy with where I am now. Like if I just stayed in my current position for the rest of my life and didn't like shake the world or anything, I'd still have a really beautiful, amazing life that I'm grateful for. But the fact is, is that I'm 22 years old and I do have this time and this ability to do even more. So I'm really like even mega grateful for that. And I guess if we continue with this book metaphor, it feels like right now and probably for the next couple years, I'm in like the exposition phase of a brand new part two to this novel of my life sorry if the metaphor is cheesy but I think it, I think it works here because I have the tools and means to do things and kind of embark on a new a new arc a new plot line uh and I'm just figuring out like I'm setting my sights on how I want to use them like what is it that I'm going after so this is sort of the exposition before the real rising action and I don't know what the the, the climax or the big thing I'll do in my life is, but like I'm working on figuring out like where where I want to go with that. And once again, I, I can't say this enough. I'm so grateful to be in this position that I feel like propelled forward by this gratitude. Like if you work really hard for something 
And even if you were born with more than others, or even if you just got a lucky break, don't feel bad about that. Don't feel bad unless you did something nasty <laughs> to get somewhere. Just let those good things feel you to do even more awesome things with what you have and empower others and give back. Um, that's, I don't know, that's where I just, I just feel so awesome, but I also know that I want to make sure I focus my efforts into the right things. And I'm still, if you guys heard, heard of like explore, exploit algorithms, I'm still in the explore phase where I'm reaching out my feelers of what I really want to like hone in on and go after with all my energy. Um, so I guess <laughs> tying this back to the symbolic device of the cat uh, in this whole narrative of this video. So, okay, so that's what I was going through all last year. All of these, this change, these transitions, getting to a point where I felt like I was just about ready to make the leap of sort of not abandoning my past, but like leaping into a new part of my life and not hanging on to old people, old regrets, old anything, just going purely into like a new mindset. So I, I think the final, final straw was kind of focused around uh, Christmas because we got her right before Christmas. We got her December 20th, Christmas, obviously the 25th, the following week. And so Christmas has been this weird this weird holiday for me because uh, I was really I was getting really nervous and kind of sad about what Christmas might be like uh, since I have some of the most wonderful and amazing memories from childhood and this could be the Holden Caulfield uh, catcher in the rye effect of like everything seems more awesome than childhood and I'm always like do I just have too high expectations because every year even as an adult I'm I really am hoping for some kind of Christmas miracle like I I would say I am pretty realistic, but I also believe it's really important to hang on to your childhood sense of wonder and magic, I guess, because that's what keeps the world, like, I don't know, that's what keeps things fun. But you can be an adult and still hold on to that without being childish, if that makes sense. So I was still in that childish way, childlike way, not childish way, holding on to having some kind of Christmas miracle. And even though we didn't do a whole lot of planning and I wasn't going over to family's house or friend's house, I was just staying here. I was still hoping that something magical would happen. Uh, and I've had like the past several holiday seasons for quite a while, like haven't been so great. And it's not to offend like my loving and well-adjusted family members at all. It wasn't that like anything horrible happened every single year. It was just there were what really stuck out. I think wasn't the holiday. It was just a negative or anxious landscape with all sorts of other things going on in my life or the people around me. And that environment just sort of colored everything going on at the time. Is like not super awesome and so yeah I just I just hadn't had that like magical Christmas miracle in a while and I was really nervous about what it would be like this time and then I was so pleasantly not even pleasantly just once again overwhelmed with this like gratitude because my mom flew to Seattle and we were able to like give gifts with each other and have a nice Christmas dinner together and my boyfriend got us a, like a big Christmas tree and he got us Gwendolyn and it was just it was just so amazing even though it was so like small and simple and ah, uh, just once again I'm just so like I'm so happy for like moments like that like that will always I'm so happy for the positive memories that stick out so much more strongly than any of those negative times and that's when I just really felt like okay we're on to part two I'm in complete control of setting new traditions I'm not a kid like I don't have to be dragged to places I don't want to go to uh, next year we'll have the same cat and the same tree and down the road with like these things that we build over time I'll like in 10 years I could I could have a new sense of nostalgia like oh remember when we got Gwendolyn remember those moments and so 
I guess emotionally, that's where I'm at now. And I guess that's why Gwendolyn means a lot to me. And even being at 100,000 subscribers, like what the heck, that sounds so strange to say. It feels like for YouTubers as well, because I've been watching YouTube since it was a thing, since like 2006, pretty much. I've been regularly watching YouTube, which, okay, tangent, uh, side note, 2006 YouTube just used to be like, where you could find full seasons of TV shows. Like the, the whole copyright thing is hilarious because it was like anime music videos, TV shows, and people's like actual personal blogs. Like like where no one was even expecting anyone to watch. It was just simply like a hosting site that people didn't even really know about. Anyway, anyway, anyway. so I feel like now that YouTube's become this whole like big multi- headed monster um from what i've seen at a hundred thousand subscribers it seems that people either decide to become more business-like or service-like to try and ramp up and maybe jump into it full-time or like a part-time job and the alternative being to just keep it as this personal hobby or in my case more like a dev blog I guess Uh, because that's how I've always I've always viewed this or even if it doesn't seem like it this is the direction that it will continue to head in is that it's been my personal space where every video I make is based on something that I was already interested in and I kind of selfishly wanted to learn more about it or make a project so then I just sort of clean up what I've learned do some drawings and make it into a video. So I view it as like a dev blog, a personal uh, space, but directed towards an audience. So for me, I feel like if I did kind of ramp up and like bring on another editor, and when I say that, by the way, like becoming more business, like I don't even think that's a bad thing for a lot of people that does, yeah, it just means like, oh, we're going to bring an editor on or we're going to keep a more consistent schedule. We're going to offer you more of like a consistent uh, source of entertainment or like an education curriculum or something like that. And I feel like if I took this channel's content to the fullest extent of what it would mean to be more service-like on YouTube, uh, that would mean it would turn into like a course, a tutorial. I, each week or each month, I'd kind of have to arbitrarily think of a topic that I think would be most helpful to the general public or pick an audience and see w- like where there is a need. But that's not, I don't see myself as being an educator as my primary passion. I really care about like making things, creating things. That is my passion. And I realize I want to spend 80 or 90% of my time doing that. And then, you know, wrapping up the conclusion in a bow and then posting it to YouTube to share with you guys and keep you guys up to date. So that's sort of my mindset. So I guess to like give you a general idea, if I have four weekends of free time, I'd leave like one to do a video and then three to work on my projects. And this is also why um, I haven't been posting as frequently because I really am trying to direct my efforts into learning and making my own stuff. Anyway, basically to summarize, you guys can expect the same type of content and I'm still targeting one video per month approximately, but just to let you know that my priority is actually making stuff in my own time So it'd be kind of disingenuous for me to make all these videos talking about programming and game development if that's not my primary uh, focus in my own life. Uh, So, you know, things will be the same type of content that hopefully you subscribed for, like, you know, coding tutorials and high level overviews of concepts, like how stuff works and whatever else is interesting in tech or storytelling, which is kind of my other uh focus that i want to go towards so what you signed up for but hopefully improved uh the patreon was actually way more successful than i ever thought i thought maybe we'd meet the first goal after many months it would just be a slow burn a tip jar sort of thing uh but it really helped out i was able to get some new equipment like new lighting a new way to set up the camera uh better stuff for streaming so it really did actually help me and I'm, once again, I'm also not a, gr- uh, a great 
filmmaker or editor, so I'm still trying to kind of figure stuff out and how to work with a hodgepodge setup. Um, but yeah, so I'm actually super, super grateful to everyone, I guess, who believes in me enough to even consider donating. And this is why I may not be the best, the best business person, but feel free, take this as your reminder to cancel the recurring payment on Patreon if you just want to, you know, give a tip or something, because I would feel really bad if I missed a video by a few weeks or I didn't get in the month because I was focusing on other things and you got charged for something that didn't actually show up. So that's my philosophy with that. I just view it as you guys are giving me a really nice gesture, so I too want to give you nice gestures back, and that's why any rewards uh, that I'll add in the future, and I do anticipate there being some more um, incentives, benefits, fun things, those will be retroactively applied. So even if you just gave $1 for one month and then canceled, and then six months down the line, there's like a coupon or something like that, I will try to get that to you, uh, even if you're not a current subscriber. Yeah, so like I said, it's a really nice gesture to kind of leave a tip and help out with getting equipment and stuff. So in turn, I just want to give you guys nice gestures back when I can. Anyway, enough talking from me. I just... I really wanted you guys to meet Gwendolyn. I really wanted to say thank you and that all of this gratitude really is like what keeps me like alive and pulsating with motivation to make stuff for you guys. Hopefully there's something that I can uh, release for you guys by the end of the year. That's my target. And I'm excited to just make videos, share what I'm working on, cool things I'm interested in. And I'm also always super happy to see what you guys are making and what you guys have to say. So once again, thank you so, so much. Um, and we're going to have a great 2017. So have a happy day wherever you are. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.